Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today we have our next episode in our series of How to Play Division with the first Polish. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content. Let's dive right in. So here we are with our first pull of check. I do believe the best way to build this is definitely Maverick. You can certainly get it. You can get away with anything on any of the divisions, but this is definitely a more aggressive, tilted division. The strengths of this division most definitely lie in both its infantry and its air force. This is where this deck really shines. Its weaknesses are clearly its artillery and its armor, but uh, armor is arguable. Uh, it, T-34s are fine. They're great. If you haven't seen the comparison of medium tanks, you definitely should go check that out. Let's hop into the infantry tab, which is definitely the most interesting of all the tabs here. <clears throat> now, oh, I made some changes and it did not save them. That's annoying. Let's do that and get rid of that. Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me, excuse me. There we go. Okay, now we're ready to go. Now, so for A phase, we have two cards of Strelke LKM, which are kind of like Gavardia DP, except that they have semi-automatic rifles. You'll find that a lot in this division. A lot of semi-automatic rifles makes their infantry really strong, uh, and this is where they get a lot of their strength. The other difference with the Strelke LK uh, LKM compared to the regular Strelke is you get two machine guns versus one, and of course you go from an anti-tank grenade to an anti-tank rifle, which at the beginning of the game is arguably better because you can snipe transports and things, and that tends to be when people are bringing out a lot of lighter material that you can you know, take advantage of that anti-tank rifle a little bit more. But the main reason is for that double DP instead of the single DP. And also, in this case, you get semi-automatic rifles as well. Continuing over here, we get the Odziel Karni. I'm, I'm going to say these things wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, really good squad, 20 man. It's disheartened. That's almost a good thing these days. You get triple machine gun. You get your semi-automatic, uh, not semi, excuse me, anti-tank rifle, you get a couple submachine guns and a bunch of rifles. Very good squad. You definitely want to take these. They're the same as Strafniki and stuff, basically. Then we have what are essentially Tanko Desaniki, okay, when they're M3A1 half-tracks. And then we have Sapiris Rock, Sapizi Rocks. These are very good. They have semi-automatic rifles, semi, uh, SMGs, double machine gun, uh, and then, of course, a flamethrower. Very solid. They are meant for close range, but can certainly hold their own at long range with their double machine gun. Phase B, we have two cards of Sapersies, which you get your semi-automatic rifles and your TNT, just like the usual ones do. Another card of Strelke LKM, and another card of the Odziel Karni. So, very strong infantry vision. Other options include just regular Strelke. I would consider taking the Sapersies Piponk with the AT rockets, because you can bring them in in the really fast you know, uh, jeeps here. I just couldn't really find space for them. I would definitely bring those in A to like establish early dominance. These are basically Avtos. Uh, and that's, yeah, those are, those are basically your options. Then you have this Shulky L uh, SVT. Basically, if you just want a little bit more actual AT power in your deck, but you're losing the machine guns. So hopping back over to the recon tab, very solid recon tab here. You get BA 10s, which are absolutely fantastic. SU 57s, which are definitely usable and dangerous when used correctly. And a card of T 34 76s with one vet. Since you only lose one, same with the SU 57, since you only lose one guy, there's almost no reason not to just up that him once. Uh, other options include your usual two man recon team, these universal carriers, but they're just machine guns really. Uh, this is a, a solid squad of infantry. You can sneak around with them because remember recon don't affect the front line and then this other squad of infantry, but I didn't really find my infantry lacking. I much preferred the armor contingent and light vehicles. Tank wise, your options are basically T-34s all the way across. You have a T-70 you could take. They're not actually super duper bad or anything, uh, but you're definitely going to take the T-34s over those and T-34s are solid. They're not like the best thing in the world, but they're very good and they're very spammable. Call them in in twos and they're really way more effective. They can beat most armor. And hopping over here to the support, we have, of course, our flamethrowers, card of machine guns, a commander, and some supply. Not much else to choose from, really. You get these kind of like assault guns, but they're not they're not that good these days, especially at only 1,500 meter range. And then in the anti-tank tab, we have some okay options, but it's really not strong overall. You get these PTRSs, which you definitely want at the beginning to rush to get up front really quick, and you get nine of those, which is abnormal. You get a lot. And then, and they also come with smoke, can be really useful. Then a card of light AT, 
SU85s, you only get one card, so I'm bringing them in A. And finally, Zis 3s, which I'm bringing in for B to kind of hold over the rest of the game in terms of AT. Although you're not going to be using it a lot, you're almost going to use this more as an aggressive, uh, both of these as, you know, supporting your infantry because they both have HE shells, making them kind of useful in that. AA tab. Lots of 40, uh, 37 mils here, and then a card of 85 mils, just in case I run into anything really heavy that I can't beat. Otherwise, this is really your strongest form of AT on the ground. Artillery tab is not bad. It's just not, like, anything heavy. Uh, SU-76s are definitely an option if you bring in enough radio stuff. So, I'm not bringing them here. I'm just bringing some mortars and the card of uh, leaders. Want to make sure I keep buffing those troops. And then the powerful air tab. We have Yak 1Bs, which are not actually very good fighters, but they're cheap, so you can bring a lot of them. You could bring in Yak 3s, but the problem is you only get one at double vet, and that's not worth an entire card. The real shining of this deck is the IL-2. These are fantastic. They're very good very good uh, resilience. They can actually shoot down other planes pretty easily, so do not head on these. If you are the opponent, do not head on an IL-2. It'll actually usually win. Uh, it's got plenty of armament to beat you. Uh, you get the bomber variant. I would definitely take the heavy bomber variant over the light bomber variant. Uh, it's get two 250 kilogram bombs. This will kill basically anything. And then both cards of the cluster bombers, which are for killing the opposing tanks, which you might struggle with with your weak AT and your, you know, not high penetration tanks. You're going to kind of need these to kill some of the heavier German armor and stuff that you cannot break through. So this, the idea of this deck is definitely to go in hard and fast and win as quickly as possible, leveraging your really powerful infantry, supported by lots of T-34s and your really strong air to keep your opponent on the back foot and not allow them to really establish good counters to your strong infantry. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content. Have a fantastic day.